right, going with the new edit style here. As you can see, I'm just bouncing from key moments to key moments. Here I am, heading into town, waiting for the 545, boarding the 545, mounting the bike, and getting rolling. We, of course, swerve into town, stop at the transit center before heading out, and then, of course, cruise through town ever so gingerly, and then onto the 520 into the city. And there you can see the forever backed up 405 lane, and then one of the final overpriced transit station of the richest neighborhoods in the country, and then breaking light there and pop coming onto the 520 bridge. You can see Seattle to the left, U District to the right, and then we had traffic. Imagine that traffic, 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 and then pop coming into downtown. We're on the local streets, and this is where I bounce off and out of the bus. Thank you. All right, pull the bike off, and up goes the rack. I always shake it just to make sure it's up, and then I get to rolling. Now the bus held back for some reason, so I was able to just basically pull away in front of it. Rolled all the way to town, pretty far, and got in here, and switched over to... I noticed the car was pulling out, I knew they were going to do that shit, so I went up around it, got into the dedicated bike infrastructure here. Cut over on the pine, then cut over, did some switching back and forth, and pulled into monorail coffee here. This is like a tradition for me. I always get a monorail coffee or a zeitgeist. Hey, oh, could I get a cappuccino? Yeah. I'll take a chubby cookie too. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if you like insert the car too soon, it like freaks out too. Oh yeah. Oh, I've done that too. I... It has its own personality. It seemed to change just a little bit every few days or yeah. so. <laughs> Cheers. So from here, I unlocked my bike and basically strolled along with it, along with my coffee and my chubby. Yes, that's what they're called. Down through the Seattle streets, which as you can see, Seattle's completely destroyed. The riots, everything is burned down. There are no people left. There's nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing left of Seattle. So anyway, as I strolled down the completely destroyed city of Seattle and ate my chubby, I made it successfully, amazingly, through several of the bike lights on the 2nd Avenue bikeway. But then, tragedy struck. Oh, drop my cookie. You saw that, huh? <laughs> Sad day. <laughs> All right, so as you're rolling in here, as I do, I dismount right here. Don't want to get anybody ruffled. Uh, sometimes there's a guard here. Sometimes the door is open. Sometimes you have to open it yourself. If you do, it can be kind of tough. But then just here to the left, I cut into the area where you can go and check your baggage or whatnot. But I'm just getting a tag for my bike. Once that's done. Cool. Thank you. Which way is 830? No, 830. Oh, do I got to go all the way to the back? Okay, 830 is with this gentleman. Sorry. My oh, okay, cool. But your bicycle will be here at the baggage car. Cool. So basically, I was getting it sorted out where my sleeping car was going to be in relation to the baggage car. Because usually they're on autopilot. They point you to the baggage car with the bike, but then they just assume that you're going to go sit in coach, which is not the case. I'm going to be on this train for 46 hours. Eventually, at some point, the baggage crew comes up, and they usually do kind of a hit or miss thing. It's a little weird how they do this. Sometimes they just take the bike from you and put it on the baggage car. And sometimes they do things like this, where they pull up, they start to fiddle with all the baggage and they make me wait. Or they are cool about it and they just have me hand it to them over the baggage yep. truck, which is, as you can see, awkward. Thanks, y'all. It's just kind of strange. But, you know, they're almost always friendly about it. They're, you know, they're just doing their thing. Hello. Going all the 
way, way you're going to go to your right up the stairs to your left room D. Right, left. D. I know it says C, but you're going to D. Don't worry, I'll listen to you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Always do what the car attendant says. Don't argue with them. They're going to be taking care of you for 46 hours on this train. So get, get off to a good start. <laughs> so with that, I board the train, head upstairs. You can see the sounder train getting ready to leave with some commuters on it. And then this is my room for the next 46 hours. This is going to rock. As we depart Seattle, we exit the downtown tunnel, which is about a mile long. And then there's some of this trashy junk, which just on the other side of all this is the waterfront, which is kind of sad that this is the first thing you see coming out of it. But we cruise along a decent little clip, going probably at 30 miles per hour or something like that. All right, and as we're leaving, <sighs> I hate to say this, but it's the harsh reality of traveled America. As you're leaving, it's just this dumpy waterfront with these, you know, docks out here with all this commercial crap on them that isn't particularly associated with anything. And then you get blocked by the sculpture park here too. You can't tell it's a park. It's just concrete crap. And eventually you see the beautiful Olympic Park here and you can finally see a little bit of the Puget Sound. It lasts literally for like 20 seconds or, or less as you go by. Then I'll let you enjoy this announcement. So that's how the dining car works. Eventually, we roll on into Ballard here. I get a little out of focus shot, but this is where I used to live. Um, miss it to some degree. And then eventually we roll into the countryside. And they're already starting to serve dinner at this point because it's about an hour later uh, versus that other shot. This is coming into Snohomish. You go through some absolutely beautiful lowlands right here, leaving Everett. And you're running along the Snohomish River right there. And these are the these are the first few houses. But this is the thing with this whole trip. There's absolute you, you you see some of the decimated, just lousy, trashed part of America, and then you see some of the most stunning, beautiful expanses of America all at the same time. From the mountains to the cities to the the backwater sections of cities to the, the dumpy landscapes of part of Montana. Uh, it's a it's a really strange hit or miss type of thing. And that's just kind of travel in America, really, when it comes down to it. Uh, and I just felt like I'd call that out for this. As you can see right here, beautiful fields and then a dump. We just passed a car dump. Really weird. Let's hit on the cool part. So this is us getting into the mountains. You get in the mountains pretty quick up into the Cascades and everything. It's absolutely stunning up there. But really, I captured some stills just to show you of some of the beauty of this first day of the trip. It's, it's absolutely stunning. That's Ballard, again, a few different shots. And that's exiting Ballard right by Golden Gardens. So if you know where that's at, that's, that's a great spot to go. Here's some of the rivers once we get up into the mountains a little ways. You can see the mountains there. You can see the rivers, the rapids. This is another shot just north of Ballard, kind of heading into Everett. And then another one of the rivers. It's absolutely stunning. So with that, I give you day one of my trip to Pittsburgh. <laughs>